Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, if you're here with us in person or if you're tuning in at home, uh, welcome to House Christian Church. Always good to be here together on a Sunday as family and uh, we're all coming together to worship the one true God and that uh, is always a good thing. So I like what Dave's doing. He's up, he's saying hello to people. So if you're here, why don't you say good day to someone? If you're online, why don't you throw a little something up, say hello so someone can connect with you um, wherever you are. Maybe you're on a holiday still, maybe you're resting up. Maybe you're brand new tuning in, but uh, we want to say welcome, and we're going to start by praising our Lord. So if you're with us, why don't you stand on your feet? If you can, if you're at home, join in as well. 
as we worship our God.
we declare you are great. You, at, at the sound of your voice, the enemy trembles. At the sound of your voice, creation unfolds. At the sound of your voice, dead and dry bones come to life. Jesus, we lift your name on high because there's no name higher. Jesus, we just come before you today. We welcome you in this place. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fall. Holy Spirit, we honour you in this place. Jesus, we lift your name on high and we worship you. We speak to the dry bones and we say, live. Lord, we just speak your name and creation unfolds before us. Lord, we speak your name and the enemy trembles. The walls are broken down. People are healed in impossible, impossible situations. You do miracles, Jesus. So we speak your name today. We speak your name over dry, dead bones. We speak your name over impossible health situations over impossible relationships that could never be healed in the natural. We speak your name over them, Jesus. And we say, come to life in the name of Jesus because everything has to bow to the authority of your name, Jesus. We know that by your name, the world was created and by your name, it has to come into alignment. And so we speak your name. Jesus, we lift your name on high. We just love you, Lord. We're going to worship you again now, Lord, and we're just going to lift your name on high over every situation, over everything that's burdened in our hearts, over everything that's impossible. Jesus, we're going to lift your name and we are going to trust in that name. Jesus, we love you. come forth from your wilderness. I have not destined you to live in the valley of dry bones. I have not called you to live in lack and barrenness. I have called you into a place of abundance. I have called you to myself. Come to me, says the Lord. There is no place in heaven and earth that is greater than to be by my side. Come forth. Come forth. Hallelujah. I knew Jesus was going to do something this morning and I believe he's just going to continue to do it um, as Steve brings the word today and as we worship again later.
but I believe that he's going to do it individually in your lives, even as we sit in our, in our different rows. Um, God is already ministering and he's going to be setting people free and he's going to be doing things this morning. I just, I just knew it yesterday and this morning, um, I don't know if you can feel it, but the Holy Spirit's presence is thick in this place and it's a beautiful thing. And when he's here, sometimes we can, I did not plan on crying because I put mascara on this morning. And, um, but when the Holy Spirit is here, how can we help ourselves? We're a mess in his presence. He messes us up. Thank you, band. Thank you for leading the way. The worship team, their job is to lead us into the presence of God. And, and thank you for doing that every week, guys. They do it so faithfully. Let's just, um, well, yeah, you've all sat down. That's fine. But we're going to pray um, over specifics um, just quickly. Jesus, we pray for everyone in our prayer book. Lord, we just pray for health issues, for financial issues, for businesses in this house, Lord, for financial provision for this house, Lord, for um, jobs for people, Lord, who don't have jobs, Lord, for... Oh, Jesus, we just pray over our precious ones, our precious children who are going back to school soon, Lord, and going back to their learning. Lord, we just pray your protection over them in Jesus' name. We just declare a hedge of protection around them and over them. Lord, we lift up everyone who has a need today and we lift them to you. Lord, we lift up the church worldwide. We know that people are being killed today for your name and we lift them up, Jesus. We just pray that your peace would rest on them, Lord. We just thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ in every nation who are standing firm for you and you. We just pray a blessing on them. Your name, amen. Powerful name of Jesus, amen. All right, we might... Have a quick minute to turn around and hug someone. Oh, not hug, because we're still being COVID friendly. <laughs> um, elbow. <laughs> um, say hi. Um, not that we're living in fear at all, but we're honouring now our laws. I'm only going to give you about 30 seconds, so quickly say hi. Everyone, elbows are out. I'm loving it. Yeah, sure. Okie doke. While everyone's saying hi, um, we have some very, very important birthdays this week. Um, I can see, Oh, I'm missing one birthday boy. Oh, no, I can see him. Excellent. We have several birthday boys. Um, one birthday boy today. Quentin, are you here? I can't see Quentin, but it's Quentin's birthday today. He's probably somewhere like Dreamworld today. So happy birthday, Quentin. Um, We have three birthday boys and one birthday girl this week. Um, We have Nathan Craig on the 20th. Woo, woo, woo! Nathan loves a good birthday. Jeremy John Fredericks, it's his birthday on the same day. Woo, woo! Both of those guys on Wednesday, if you want to give them a text. Parker Sharp, it's your birthday this week. Woo-woo! And my beautiful Suze, Suze Harriman, it's your birthday. Woo-woo! She's not here. She might be here. I've missed her. Okay, so text those people this week. Happy birthday to you. Okay, we have um, an important call for help. We have an amazing team who run our youth. Um, Most of them also run the rest of the church. And they're getting, they're getting a little bit worn out and we would love to peel some responsibility off them if we can. But also, gee, this is... It's hard to say which part of the church is the most important part. Actually, biblically, there's not. That we're all equal. We're all a part of the body. But the youth are so important and, and we just really want to get this right. So we're just asking for people for you to pray this week for God, to ask God if it's an area that you could serve in, but we're needing more people to help with youth. There is no age limit. Obviously, we want people, you know, unfortunately, Josiah can't put up his hand and say, I want to help at youth as much as he would love to. Um, it, it, we need adults, but as far as, as, if you're an adult, there is no age limit upwards. If you are 90 and you feel called to serve in the youth ministry, we want you to be a mother or a father in the house. So please come and see Liz. So Liz is our awesome youth coordinator. And she, um, she would love to talk to you today 
Um, if you need time to pray about it, pray about it. If you want to just say, hey, my heart was beating a bit faster when Jess said that, but I'm not sure, still say, say hey to her because she would love that. Um, okay, most of our stuff is on the app, so download the app if you need any more information. There's also three ways to give. One of them is, um, so we've got text and we've got, um, you can text this number, you can do a bank transfer for the blah, 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 transfer or in the um, foyer there's a box so you can do cash there if you'd like. Um, a very exciting announcement and I want to paint a good picture for you so you know what it is and you feel comfortable bringing people. This is an outreach um, opportunity that we have had planned actually for last year but because of COVID it didn't happen. Um, we've been highly, highly recommended this lady called Kimberly Davis from our oversight at Axe. Kimberly, what do I, Kimberly Douglas, I don't know what I said. Um, Jeremy and I have met with her and her husband, Stuart, um, and we are very excited to have them here. Her ministry is she's a health coach and a nutritionist. She um, talks, she does, she talks to businesses, to churches about um, health. So she's very moderate, she's not extreme in any way. She just um, basically covers general health when when do you need to go for checkups what what are some danger signs she talks about food tea coffee how much is too much um she talks um about she gets into the nitty-gritty of health issues that affect us so she's going to have a men's um a men's morning and a women's morning separately she is very fun to be around but she's also a prophet so first of all she talks about the body and how we can keep our body in good shape then she talks about our emotions, so she'll go into um, depression and anxiety, when to get help, what we can do, and then after that, she'll she'll announce that she's, you know, the the spirit is also a part of our being, and she wants to minister to that. Um, so, so when you invite people, I don't know if you want to let them know that that's that's kind of the gamut that's going to be covered. But she has already got words for us. So she texts, she messaged me not long ago and said, God's already given me words of knowledge and prophecies for your people. And so she says, imagine how many I'm going to have, you know, by February. So I'm so excited that she's coming. She's so normal. She's so just a normal Aussie girl. She's awesome. Um, and that's why we wanted to meet with her too. And she's very upfront of this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go, hey, you come out the front this. She's just going to say, God told me this. God told me that. God told me this. Come and see me after if that's you. So it's not going to be threatening in any way. Um, if you bring um, a friend who doesn't yet know Jesus. But that is our goal, is that everyone could bring someone who doesn't know Jesus yet because it's, it is an outreach. Then on the next Sunday, she is going to give her testimony and it is a wild one. Um, I've actually never met someone in person with this testimony. So I was blown away to hear her testimony and you'll be blown away too. And that is a great opportunity um, to bring someone who hasn't met Jesus yet. So those dates are coming up did have them the 28th of um, February so the last weekend in February we're going to do a Saturday morning we'll get the guys in first for an hour then we'll do a hut and one hour because she might be still ministering to people giving people their health work their words of knowledge that she's got for them we'll have a morning tea that we'll share and then for those of us who have kids we'll swap over so the mums will tag the dads the dads will take the kids out and we'll have a women's um, health seminar then and then some ministry time after she is one of those rare people who actually said if if their prayer line is still going out the door three hours later, she will stay. So she has incredible stamina. Um, if you are searching God for a word of knowledge or for healing, this is a time that you are going to get prayed for. So, um, so keep that in mind. Put it in your diary. Start praying about who to invite. But this is the last weekend in February and her name is Kimberly Douglas. We'll, she's going to send us some videos of her talking so you can get to know her a little bit um but that is coming up very soon and i think i have covered oh no i haven't one super 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 duper um important thing um religious education somehow miraculously in this day and age we are still allowed to go into schools and preach the gospel i don't know how that's happened i feel like that's a miracle if you look at the politics of today um, we are desperate, the, the Gold Coast community of churches is desperate for people to teach RE, or it's called RI now, in schools. 
Again, you do not have to be a teacher. You do not have to be qualified. You do not have to have any experience teaching kids. You just have to be willing. Um, if you are at all interested, Shona, are you here? I don't, I don't think Shona's here, so come and see me after um, and I'll give you the information you need. Again, even if you're just like, oh, I'm so nervous, I don't really want to, but my heart was beating fast and maybe God's saying to do this, please just come and talk to me and I'll give you some more information. But that's, you know, praise God that we can legally go into schools in Australia and tell them about Jesus. What a miracle that is. Um, we're going to look to the screen and while we do that, the kids are welcome to go out to Kids Church. Whoop, whoop. Oh, before we do, sorry, before the kids God can go. God doesn't want you. Sorry, John. The kids can go, but I just want to, I just want, well, the kids might want to hear this too. Did you see the sign out the front this morning? How cool is that? Do you know, Brett, so go and high five Brett at the end or high elbow him. This man over here has worked tirelessly um, to the point he showed us like 50 different samples of like where he added a bit of yellow, added a bit of red, added a bit of purple, changed it a million times to get it absolutely perfect. And I think you'll agree it is absolutely perfect. And big high five and maybe a big shout out clap to Brett. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, John. God doesn't want you to go to church on Sunday. He doesn't want you to throw some money in the offering. He doesn't want your attention. He hasn't asked you for quiet time. He's not interested in your songs. Or should I say just? Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You see, God doesn't want what you or I can give him on a Sunday morning. He wants everything. It's so easy to treat God as an addition. We pile up our priorities until we can pile no longer. And then we find a space in our schedule and our hearts where we can fit God. And then we fall apart, wondering why we can go to church on Sunday and yet only seldom experience peace that surpasses all understanding. Or we read our Bible once a week and yet we wonder why we don't have any of the answers. Or we spend the minimal amount of time seeking God and then wonder why we can't find him when we need him. God does not just want to be an addition, a leftover. He wants everything. You might say, that kind of commitment just seems so impossible. But when we gave him nothing, Jesus gave us his everything. He gave us his very life. And the amazing thing about what he did for us is that when we trust him, we are made into new creations. And when we seek him with our whole hearts, we will find him. And you cannot spend time in the presence of a loving and living God and not be completely changed. It may seem impossible to give everything you have to God, but when you take time to be filled with his spirit, he says, you want to know how to pick up your cross? Look at the cross I carried for you. When you truly know Him, you're no longer simply spending time reading a book, but instead you're spending time with a friend, and better yet, a Savior. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, your word is a light unto our path. And in this world where at times we experience so many, much turmoil and so much ups and downs, we thank you that your word is steadfast. It never changes. And uh, Lord, it continues to light the way before us. Father, I pray that as we open your word this morning, you would speak to us, you would continue to guide us through your word, continue to bring our hearts to peace, Continue to foster in us all that you desire. Father, I step from myself into your anointing now as I open up your word. And I pray that you might use this vessel to minister your word of life into the hearts of the people before me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Psalm 90, verse 12. 
says these words. So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we might present to you a heart of wisdom. This morning, as I was uh, earlier in the uh, near the beginning of the year, as I was contemplating 2021, I thought about time. And so this morning, I just want to open up some of our, the biblical understanding of time, what time is, uh, what time is in, in God. We sang this morning uh, that, that, that song, Time is in His Hands. And so I want to open up a little bit of uh, biblical understanding of time and then give a very practical application uh, to that this morning. So this, uh, this prayer of Moses in Psalm 90 verse 12 teaches to number our days so that we might present to you a heart of wisdom. You know, this passage is not so much about counting our days as it is making our days count. We have a certain number of dates that have been allotted to us. Many of us don't know how many days that is. So far I have lived and I've worked it out 23,193 days. You wait till you calculate your days. <laughs> uh, most of those days I don't remember. Most of those days are just uh, doing what I need to do. But there have been some special dates. If I ever forget the 16th of October, 1982, my life will be shortened by uh, quite a number of days. <laughs> that was the day I married my wife. Uh, and there have been a number of other days that have been significant in my life. And as you think back over your life, and it's a good thing to do at the beginning of a new year to reflect over your life, there will be days in your life that stand out more than others. There will be, in fact, days that change your life. In an instant, it may have been something that you were expected or something that came totally unexpected, but it had such an impact upon your life that it actually changed your life. It might be, a, for me, it was a decision to move countries. And as I look back, there have been a number of significant days that have marked my life. And so this prayer of Moses... Uh, as he is praying this before, before God teaches to number our days. It's not so much about counting and getting a numerical value. I just did that, uh, counted up the number of days just for a, an exercise to do. Uh, but that's not what God is all about. And, what, uh, and it doesn't, uh, it's also not the prayer or not the understanding of the prayer that Moses prayed. In this prayer... Moses understands that ultimately is God who is over all. We sung it earlier. Time is in his hands. We often think time is in our hands. It's one of those things that we need to be stewards of. Like our finance. Like other areas of our life. Uh, we, we have a, a time, a day is gone. You cannot get yesterday back. It's gone. I cannot get all those 23,000 days back. And some have been good and some have been not so good. Some have been very difficult and challenging, some of those days. Some have been full of rejoicing and celebration. Solomon, years later, would write that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. And so there was this idea in Solomon that in order to gain wisdom as we go through life, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of that. As we understand that God is in control of our life, that God is the one who apportions our days. 
God gives us that time. And so, in order to be wise, we need to respect the God who gives us our days and honour him as we go through life. Again, Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, to, there, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. And we know, we know the song, don't we? A time to be born and a time to die. You see, time is something, is, is some, God is outside of time. He exists beyond time. But time is for us to steward, to be wise about. And then right down the end of that passage in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, in verse 11, he says, He has made everything, he has made everything appropriate in its time. Another translation says he has made everything beautiful in its time. And so this is saying even the days of difficulty, even the days of challenge that we go through from time to time, God has the ability to make even those beautiful. God has the ability to take our broken lives Uh, the disappointments we face, the days when things are not going so well, when we face heartache, when we face loss and grief. And he has the opportunity to take those days and make them beautiful. To create something beautiful in our life through the challenges that we go through. The word time uh, in this passage there's two, two words, there's time, uh, the word that's translated for time, and there's a word translated for season. And two different Hebrew words. Season is a continuation of time. It's a period of time. And so we have, as Gary told me this morning, fall, that's because he's American, uh, or, or uh, uh, we have uh, autumn, summer, winter, a season. And in that season, there are things that happen. Any good gardener will know you don't plant your lettuce crops unless it's in a hot house in wintertime. Okay? There is a season. And our life uh, has seasons that they go through as well. And so in this passage, these two words, an appointed occasion is, a, is time. It's translated time. It's an appointed occasion. It's a time that as we're moving through our season of life, there is an appointed occasion in the midst of that. A a, a place where God begins to visit. And I want to draw your attention back to the prophetic word this morning. Where God was saying about time to come out. Time to walk with him. And so... This first word, this time, a time to give birth and a time to die, could be understood that this is a moment in time. Uh, Last week, Shane spoke us about the change that took place in the life of his life at the birth of his son. And anybody who has uh, children will know it changes your life. It changes your life. Uh, A week before, Steve spoke about his te- gave his testimony and spoke about the time he walked into a church and the change that has, that has not only made upon his life but ho- upon the life of his family. And as I was sitting with God at the beginning of this year and as I was contemplating 2021, I feel that God spoke to my spirit And he says there are going to be appointed occasions, appointed times in this year. Appointed times for us as a church and appointed times for us as individuals. And so this morning I I just want to open up how to recognise that appointed time. Because we don't know what 2021 will bring. 2020 was a shock. And we don't know what 2021 will bring. 
But if our hearts are steadfast in God, I believe we will recognise appointed times and appointed seasons, even in the midst of the year that we are about to go into. It is appointed occasions that give meaning to daily routines. As I said, most of those days that I've lived, I don't remember. Just going about faithfully doing whatever was in my hand to do sometimes, particularly when I was a lot younger, not good things. Sometimes I get up to some mischief. But I feel that as I've lived a few more of those days, I've learnt some wisdom. I've learnt how to walk, how to give my life to God, how to know and recognise God's seasons and God's purposes. You see, these uh, things that, uh, these times that uh, Solomon is talking about, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to heal and a time to... Sorry, a time to kill and a time to heal, to tear down, to build up, to weep, to laugh, to mourn, to dance. They are specific times. Time of dancing or mourning the passing of a loved one are memorable times in the seasons of our life. As in the natural, so in the spiritual, God brings times in our life of divine intervention. And if we are wise, we will recognise the times of God's intervention in our life and we will prepare for them. The Greeks also used uh, two separate words uh, for a a passage when this uh, was um, translated into what was called the Septuagint, Uh, which is the Old Testament translation into uh, New Testament Greek. Again, the uh, Hebrew, uh, the the writers use two words, uh, chronos and kairos. And I guess uh, for chronos, uh, we we can, this uh, wristwatch, which we're all tied to, uh, is another word for it is a chronometer. It's something that measures time. We talk about a chronology which is looking at a, the passage of time in a, in a, in a genealogy. So chrono, or a chronicle uh, records patterns of movement in history. And so there is this tick, 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 tick of chronos, the steady movement of time, and we are all subject to it. Day by day, we are subject to that time. And the Greeks had another word, kairos. And in Greek culture, kairos had the idea uh, of, of a special event. So it could be, like I said, the birth of a child, a marriage. And so chronos would be leading up. So for, for a marriage, you'd be preparing. There'd be a time where you'd have to prepare, you'd have to work, you'd have to organise things. Then the event. And then there's a chronos that took place after that, the passage of time after that event. But that chronos was subject to that moment. You, that moment changed you as a person. And so we prepare for a wedding or, or a birth. The events happen in... Uh, in Kronos time, but then the, that Kairos moment comes and after a, our life is changed by that moment. One of the passages that are defined by Kairos is Galatians 4.4. 4. It says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. And that word fullness of time is this word Kairos. It's God's appointed time. There had been all the events of the Old Testament that led up to the birth of Christ all the preparation that had gone on over the Old Testament. And then in the appointed time, that Kairos moment, God sent forth his son. When everything had been prepared, 
God entered into our time. A God who exists outside of time entered into our time and became subject to our time laws. And then beyond that, the world changed. Lives changed. Nations changed. So the fullness of time is kairos. It's marked in the New Testament as God's timing when God moves from his timelessness into our time. In the book of Luke, we read of a a priest called Simeon. And Simeon was a man, a, a righteous man, who went about his duties daily in the temple. But he'd been promised something by God that he would not see, uh, that he would not pass away before he saw what, what was termed in the scriptures the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit was speaking to him. Day by day, many young people or many children would come to the temple and he would go about his normal routine of dedicating them, of... Uh, uh, of um, praying with the parents. But then in a, one child came. And in that instant, Simeon recognised who that child was. The Holy Spirit had spoken to him and he recognised that child. Because Simeon was looking for what God was doing, the Holy Spirit prompted him. Folks, can I say this to you this morning? God wants to work in your life. God loves you and he wants to work in your life. And you're going to go through seasons and you're going to go through times and that doesn't mean that God has abandoned you or forsaken you. Because he's going to turn that season that you are into into something beautiful. Don't mark your Kronos time with bitterness or anger or resentment or frustration. Keep your heart right before God because it's only in that place like Simeon's heart was right with God. It's only in that place where our heart is right with God that suddenly the Holy Spirit can speak to us and we can recognise God's opportunity. And we can recognise what God is doing. To those that are prepared to invite the Holy Spirit into their moments, we are stewards of our Kronos time. You can choose to do with your Kronos time whatever you want. It's your time. You are stewards of it. God has given you that as a gift. Your moments, your days. That is God's gift to you. It's your choice. But to those that invite God's spirit into their moments, we are able to recognise God's opportunities. And they can come suddenly. There were many, many in uh, the nation of Israel that did not recognise Jesus coming. Because their life was so full of, of the ticking minutes, of the things it had to do, the busyness of life, the frustrations, the margins, financial margins of trying to earn a living, trying to make ends meet. that they had neglected time with God and they did not recognise God's opportunity when it came. At Jesus' first coming, there were many that did not recognise his arrival. Busy in their activities, too busy to see what God was up to. And so too, if we are not looking we will miss what God is doing in our lives and the life of the church. 
Acts chapter 1, verse 7, Jesus speaking to his disciples gathered together in the upper room while they were waiting. Jesus had passed away. It was a, uh, or uh, dead. The, the disciples were full of uh, doubt or, and, and fear what, what was going to happen now. Um, Jesus had been crucified. Um, and then Jesus appears to them in the upper room suddenly. They weren't expecting it. But Jesus comes and appears for them and he says these words, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. I don't know what 2021 holds, but I know who holds 2021. And I believe, whether you're young or old, whether you're in a, uh, this morning, if you are in a youthful season and you have your life plan before you, or like me, you've, li- you've lived a few days, but still have plenty of life in the old goat yet. I don't know where you are, but can I encourage you? Put your life in God's hands. Put your family in God's hands. Make it a commitment. Because I believe that there is opportunities for us. There is opportunities for every young person in this place. I did not know what course of life my children uh, took, whether suddenly at the age of uh, five years ago they all decided to up and, and move to Queensland. They made, they made their choices before God, and it's been wise choices. If I have learned anything over the 23,193 days I've, I've lived, I've learned that God has my back. That does not mean I won't go through difficulties or struggles, but God is going to make those, even those struggles and those difficulties, He's beautiful in His time. It could be said that Kronos marks our quantity of time, Kairos marks our quality. Have you ever seen a child at play or an artist at work? Time's meaningless. They are so engrossed in what is going on before them that they forget about the ticking of the seconds. That's God's time. That's Kairos time. That's what heaven will be like. See, the, the Bible says that one day is a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. That means that God does not dwell in Kronos time. He dwells in Kairos time where we are full of awe, we are lost in wonder, when we are lost in the awesomeness. Heaven won't be boring because we will be lost in the wonder of who God is. At the moment, we are governed by time. Our life is marked by the ticking of our days and we go about our tasks, while that might appear a little dull at times. We can invite God into those moments. He chooses to invade our time, our moments, and he brings with with him Kairos moments. And as I say, if we are wise in that Kronos time and we we are inviting God in, then there will be times of wonder where it might come a day where God begins to do something special, precious in our life. And it isn't until we look back and we see, hey, wow, God, when I made this decision right back here and I thought it was just something I was, I was doing, but you were there, I invited you into making that decision. And here I am a number of years on and I recognise how wise that decision was.
When our lives are only dominated by chronos time, we lose perspective. When we're all, all, all we're consumed about is the ticking of the clock and what we need to do and what we need to do by when. Our lives can be consumed trying to fit in as much as possible to already busy schedules. We need to find time to be lost in the wonder of the, at the creative power of God. We need to sit and just listen to what he might say to our hearts about the year ahead. You ever seen a book that has no margins? It's virtually unreadable. Just words right across. I've seen some student assignments like that. <laughs> Makes it very unreadable. We need to build margins into our life. As a teacher, I know that in the margins you write comments. You write points of reflection. And we need to build margins into our life for two. Where we can sit with God, where God can make some notes in the margins of our life. What is God up to? What is he saying? How should I respond? That time opens up opportunities. When his resurrected power can break through into our moments. We, don't, we often don't recognise it. Yet we are changed by it. Changed day by day by it. Making God part of your Cronus times leads to Kairos moments. We cannot predict God's intervention but we can be prepared. 2020 taught us our vulnerability. It taught us to expect the unexpected. It gave us uncertainty. But in the midst of uncertainty, our trust in God and in his sovereignty was steepened. We encouraged our hearts to be at peace and at rest, knowing that we have, we have placed our lives in his hands. And whatever 2021 might bring, I can walk into this new year saying, God, help me to see your divine opportunities. There might be decisions that I have to make this year. There might be changes I need to make. Write your thoughts in the margins of my life so that when I come to that appointed day when I need to make that change, I can present to you a heart of wisdom. God is at work in the earth. We're seeing many of the things of which he foretold taking place and we hear his encouragement. When you see these things, look up. Your redemption draws near. Let me tell you, in the fullness of time, Jesus will come a second time. I don't know when. I don't know when he will again break into our Kronos time with a Kairos moment. But what I can do is be prepared. God will fully invade the earth's chronos once again in the second coming. For those that are anticipating and looking for that day, we will recognise God's working. And like the bridegroom's preparing for the coming of the bride, we will be prepared. The Holy Spirit will invade our chronos moments, our regular duties and responsibilities, our comings and goings, the work of our hands, with his Kairos moments. And I believe as we look to 2021 that God is going to give us opportune time as individuals. Some of you this year will make life-changing decisions. Some of you this year, and maybe already now you are aware of a, of a, a decision that you need to make that you're going to make in an instant, but it's going to change the course of your life. Can I encourage you to invite God into that decision? During those times, we will grow stronger in our faith and deeper in our worship. 
We cannot allow the busyness of life, the anxieties and pressures, the squeezed financial margins to rob our watching, listening and praying. God is moving. And the things that can be shaken will be shaken. But in the midst of it all, God is developing his opportunity, opportune time for the church, I believe. I believe in the, in the midst of people's uncertainty there, uh, this year, there is opportunity for the church. And we will see people who will come into this place, into this church in 2021, and it will be an opportune time for them. We need to enter into that Kairos moment, the joy of leading someone to, to faith in Christ. As we stand this morning, can I invite just the musicians to come back on stage? Can we stand this morning? I don't know where you stand this morning in your relationship with Jesus. But in August 1976, I made a decision that changed my life, the life of generations to come. And that was to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour and to allow him to be part of my days. If you're in this place this morning and you, you feel, hey, I don't know how many days I've got left. I'm not, that's not a prophet on the prophet or the son of a prophet That's just, I, I'm praying you have plenty of prosperous and healthy years ahead of you but can I implore you this morning make Jesus part of your days make him part of your life make him part of your decisions just a short prayer Lord I'm coming up with a, a decision will you be part of that decision for me Read his word. Be in fellowship with his people and that way your heart is continually in that place of being open to the Holy Spirit to receive what he might say to you. Can we just close our eyes across this congregation this morning? And If you're in this place this morning and you don't know Jesus And you so desperately would make, like to make him part of your 2021. Make that life decision change now. Simple prayer. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And if you're in that place this morning, in your heart, you just pray along with me. Dear Jesus, thank you that Although at times I have not known it, you have been part of my years past. And as I stand on the threshold of this new year, I want to make you part of my life. I want to present to you a heart of wisdom. I want you to be part of my decisions and my comings and goings and my ups and downs and my good days and my bad days. My difficulties, my struggles, my joys, my health, my finance. Lord, will you be part of my days this year? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all the rest of us who know the Lord, I want to encourage you this morning as you step out into the new year. You have no better hand to place your hand in than the one who gave his life for you, who loved you, and who sent his Holy Spirit into your life. Father, this morning for each one of us, I pray we might walk in the blessing of God.
The blessing of God doesn't always mean that everything's wonderful and rosy. The blessing of God simply means that you make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, we commit our church into your hands. I commit Jeremy and Jess, our pastors, and the oversight team, and all the people that minister week by week into the lives of our children, young people, and to uh, so many different lives that come into this place. I pray that you would grant them kairos moments where they sp- might spend it with a, one person or just out of the blue, but it results in a life change. Give us those moments, I pray, in 2021 that we might walk with you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, God bless you. If, you've, uh, if you need to talk to somebody about a decision that you've made this morning to walk with Jesus, I'll be down the front. Uh, if you want to come and say, hey, look, I, I made that decision this morning and I, I just want to know how, what it means to walk with Jesus. I'd love to... T- to show you how to do that. God bless you all. And Rebecca, the musician. The splendor of the King
either here this morning or out in the netland that I have a, a word of knowledge for healing. Uh, this person's had a dislocated shoulder and uh, out of that dislocation there's becoming an arthritic condition into that shoulder. This is a person uh, probably not as old as me but uh, a younger type person who um, where arthritis wouldn't normally be a problem so if that's you this morning I'd really love to be able to pray with you uh, if, if you're watching us on the net uh, father in the name of Jesus we thank you for your goodness we thank you that you know everything about us even be, before we know it ourselves and uh, Lord I just reach out now and and pray that your healing touch would just minister into that person's life all people's lives Lord and and just bring wholeness and healing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we just trust you with all things Lord and father in advance we thank you Lord for an impartation of restoration and healing in Jesus name amen if you're here and you'd like me to pray with you do that too yes sing this chorus a bridge a couple more times but as it says name above all names why don't you name that thing maybe weighing heavy on your heart this morning the thing you're praying for the person you're praying for the situation you're praying for and put his name above it and let's give it to him because you're the name above all great he is that is the name above all names and we just pray you have an awesome week we look forward to testimony upon testimony of what he's doing in your life if you need prayer we've got people right here that love to pray with you if you're